Welcome to our presentation on sentiment analysis of German children's and young adult fiction. We are Simone Rebura, Anne Heumann and Marina Lehmann from the University of Mainz and we want to share with you our research on the question Can dictionary-based approaches to sentiment analysis keep up with transformer-based models? This outline guides you through our presentation. We start with a short introduction to sentiment analysis and its different approaches. Then we familiarize ourselves with the four books dataset, which formed the basis of our research. Following this introductory part, we turn to our studies. The first one compares adapted versions of SentiArt to fine-tuned transformer models. The second one compares SentiArt without any adaptation to pre-trained transformer models. We conclude our presentation by summing up the key findings from both studies. Sentiment analysis is the part of natural language processing that focuses on automatically identifying emotional cues in texts and extracting sentiment information from them. The most basic technique is evaluating polarity by assigning the labels positive, negative or neutral to words or sentences. There is a large quantity of methods and tools available out there, and most of them are much more sophisticated than this basic setup for measuring polarity. The slide shows just a small fraction of those keywords associated with sentiment analysis. Our past research focuses on two main approaches, namely dictionary-based methods and transformer-based methods. The two approaches we looked at more closely are SentiArt, and transformer models for German. SentiArt is an example of a dictionary-based approach. Dictionary-based approaches generally work in the way that is described by this diagram here, where everything starts from a dictionary that is nothing else but a series of words with different values assigned to them, and in this case we see the example of valence values. Then a sentence is taken and tokenized. It is split into single words or sometimes even lemmas that compose it. And to each one of these words or lemmas, a single value is assigned by simply mapping them one by one to the words that appear in the dictionary. Finally, a score, a single score, is produced by calculating, for example, a simple mean of all of the scores in the sentence. But uh, SentiArt distinguishes itself from other dictionary-based approaches because it uses vector space models to create its dictionary. Vector space models are a computational technique to transform words into vectors by using their co-occurrences in large amounts of text. Sentiart uses lists of seed words, for example 60 positive and 60 negative, which model the so-called affective aesthetic potential of words, also called AAP and then it calculates distances between each word in the model and the seed words. Those distances will be the scores in the dictionary, which will have two main advantages. First of all, being generated in a fully automated way, and thus being adaptable to different models or different lists of seed words, and also covering almost the entirety of the lexicon. On the other hand, transformer models are a type of deep learning architecture that really revolutionized the field of natural language processing in recent years, and specifically starting from the year 2017. What distinguishes these models is the ability to capture long range dependencies and relationships between elements in a sequence, or of course in a sentence, in a piece of text. And notice that here I took this definition from ChatGPT because ChatGPT is in itself a product of transformer models, as the GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformers. Basic transformer models are generally trained on huge amounts of text to predict missing words in a sentence. 
as you can see in the example here. And therefore, uh, they can be used to generate a new text, like uh, again, chat GPT, but they also embed uh, a deep uh, general knowledge of how human language works. And uh, as a consequence, uh, transformer models can be adapted to perform sentiment analysis. Here, the sentiment analysis diagram changes when compared to the dictionary-based approaches. The starting point is now a data set of manually annotated sentences. Then, a basic transformer model, which already retains a deep knowledge of a human language, is fine-tuned to perform the task that is exemplified by the annotated data set. And uh, once uh, it has uh, learned how to do it efficiently, it can uh, make predictions on never seen sentences. In light of all this, our research question is, can dictionary-based approaches to sentiment analysis keep up with transformer-based models, which are so much more advanced? To try and answer this question, we used an annotated data set of German children's and young adult literature. Our studies are based on the four books data set, which has been developed in the context of the Chilza project. The data set comprises four different novels, two for children and two for young adults. Overall, the data set contains over 22,000 sentences. The full book's data set consists of a wide range of reader response ratings. Each book was read by 20 readers, most of them female. The average mean age of the 80 participants is 23. On sentence level, the raters were asked to evaluate the emotional impact in terms of valence and arousal. Additionally, they produced ratings on chapter and book level such as valence and arousal, but also suspense and transportation. As a ground truth, we decided to calculate the mean of the human valence ratings to evaluate and compare the performance of different sentiment analysis approaches. In a first study, we compared the two approaches at the highest of their possible performance namely by adapting Sentiarte via machine learning approaches and fine-tuning transformer models to our data set. Here are some technical details. For Sentiart on the left, we first of all performed the univariate linear regression using affective aesthetic potential AAP per sentence as a predictor. And then we also used the more advanced methods like multivariate linear regression, random forest, field forward neural networks, using 21 predictors all generated by Sentiart. In all of the cases, using machine learning approaches, we performed a tenfold cross-validation with 90% of the data set to train and 10% to test. Uh, to fine-tune transformer models uh, here on the right, uh, we used uh, one of the most basic models available for German language, it is a GBIRT base. And then we fine-tuned it uh, using a linear regression, a very simple linear regression, using uh, Python libraries like PyTorch and uh, Transformers, and again, being uh, also this one, uh, a kind of a machine learning approach, we did again a tenfold cross-validation by keeping 90% of the materials uh, to train and 10% to test. And the results of the comparison between the different approaches are shown by this box plot here. But actually there is not that much to comment upon, because whatever method is used to adapt Sentiart, being it univariate or multivariate linear regression, neural networks or random forests, always fine-tune the transformer models outperform Sentiart. And also note that not only transformers always outperform all Sentiart approaches, but efficiency is almost double, suggesting how it might be impossible to bridge the gap between the two. In our second study, we compared Sentiart without any adaption to pre-trained transformer models. 
To find suitable transformer models, we went on Hugging Face, a large platform where machine learning models can be shared with the community. We searched for models pre-trained for sentiment analysis of German texts and chose six models trained with data from different domains. Some models were based on Twitter data, some on news or Wikipedia articles, and others on hotel reviews. These models assign the labels positive, negative or neutral to each sentence and output the probabilities for each label. To transform the results into one single sentiment score per sentence, we calculated the weighted mean. We converted each label into a number, positive becoming plus one, neutral zero and negative minus one. Then we multiplied each number by the probability for the corresponding class and summed up these values. For example, a sentence labeled with a probability of 0.7 for positive, 0.1 for neutral and 0.2 for negative would turn into a sentiment score of plus 0.5. In the next step, we then compared these scores to the AAP scores obtained with SentiArt. This color-coded table shows the results of this comparison. It reports the Pearson correlation coefficient between the human ratings for each book and the sentiment scores determined by SentiArt or the six transformer models. The color coding from red to blue indicates the strength and nature of the correlation. For all instances, we can see slight or moderate positive correlations. There are no negative correlations. If we highlight the strongest and the second strongest correlations in the table for each book, we notice that for three out of the four books, SentiArt exhibits the strongest correlation with the human ratings, which means that out of the approaches we tested in this study, the dictionary-based approach performed best. Only for the book by Mebs, one of the transformer models, Wathlin, achieved a higher correlation coefficient. However, the results for the best and the second best lie very closely together, indicating only marginal differences between the approaches. The transformer models Rothlin and CitizenLab.co and to some extent also NLP Town reach correlation values similar to SentiArt. Especially the model Rothlin shows promising results, which we found quite surprising since it was trained on hotel reviews, a genre not very closely related to the literary text we examined in our study. This indicates that when working with pre-trained transformers in sentiment analysis, the match between the genre of the training data and the genre of the analyzed texts is not a priority. In sentiment analysis, there are two main approaches, dictionaries and transformer models. While dictionary-based approaches promise a simple and fast implementation and offer higher explainability when compared to transformer models, they also rely on rather superficial features. Recently, transformer models gained much attention in the research community because they consequently outperform traditional dictionary methods. Therefore, they are currently the state-of-the-art approach in sentiment analysis, although they require extensive resources. The main goal of our contribution consists in the comparison of dictionary-based and transformer-based approaches for German literary sentiment analysis. In our first study, we have compared an adapted version of the dictionary-based tool SentiArt with fine-tuned transformer models. Overall, it has clearly shown that fine-tuned transformer models currently are the best performing approach in sentiment analysis. In our second study, we compared an unmodified version of SentiArt with pre-trained transformer models. In this setting, SentiArt outperforms the pre-trained transformers. Altogether, we conclude that fine-tuned transformer models, while relying on extensive resources, are state-of-the-art in terms of sentiment analysis. However, in scenarios where these resources are not available, dictionary-based approaches like SentiArt are still a valuable option. If you want to read more on the subject, take a look at our bibliography.